Yo. All right, welcome everybody to the group. And this is unbelievable. This is going to be a live session. And we are going to go through at least, at least five questions that you are more than likely going to see almost verbatim on the state exam. So that's going to really help you out a lot. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Tim Jurette. I have the group in here, uh, the Florida Real Estate Exam Group, CRAM Group. And what we're going to do is we're going to go over these questions and we're going to try to give you a great explanation of each one of those questions and how uh, to remember it. That's a big thing. A lot of times people have the questions and they're like, ah, they get to the test and they can't quite remember it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through each one of these questions. We're going to make sure you are pretty comfortable with them. OK, that's going to be important. Make sure you're comfortable with them and and. When I say comfortable, it's very good to know that um, you know you that you are ready and prepared. Okay, you're gonna be you want to be prepared for this state exam, and the more confidence you have, the better you're gonna be. So let's go ahead and get started. This is gonna be a, a great session. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments. Right? Please leave them in the comments. If you're watching on YouTube, you can leave them in the comments. If you're watching on Facebook, you can also leave them in the comments as well. Now. Let's go with the very first question. Again, we don't know exactly what's going to be on the state of test, but we got pretty good information that you will see a question like this or something very similar. OK, all right. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one. Question number one, which is a written opinion of value? Which is a written opinion of value? Is it going to be a a broker's price opinion? OK, broker's price opinion. opinion. That's going to be called a BPO. And you have the next one, B, uh, comparative market analysis, or C, an appraisal, or D, an agent estimate of value, okay? An agent estimate of value. Let's go ahead and see exactly the answer to this. Again, we've got some pretty good information. You will probably see something very similar to this on the state exam. The answer in this one is going to be the broker's price opinion, BPO, BPO. Now, we're going to go through these fairly quick. This is going to be just a quick uh, session for learning, and we really want you to remember it. Now, let's talk a little bit about it. A broker's price opinion, commonly known as a BPO, is a real estate professional's opinion of a property's value. Okay, how much is that valued at? Very much like an appraisal, very much like a CMA, but this is a broker's price opinion. Make sure you understand that on the state exam, okay? Broker uh, price opinions are most often used when setting the list price of a property, similar to a comparative market analysis. That's gonna be a CMA. And in the case of a foreclosure, short sale in order to obtain a more comprehensive value uh, than a CMA. Now, a lot of times people wanna know, well, when do we use a broker's price opinion? For example, you might have a company that is sending someone to move to Florida from New York City, and part of their compensation is to purchase a house or assist them in purchasing that house. They might request, maybe they don't want to pay a full price for an appraisal. Maybe they don't want to go through the bank necessarily. They're just wanting to make sure that house has got the value. So what they will do, they will reach out to uh, a broker or a sales professional, sales associate, and say, listen, we need a written broker's price opinion, a written broker's price opinion. Now, what that's going to entail is going to be a broker that's going to kind of put their stamp of approval on it, make sure it's accurate, it reflects uh, a, a, a good value on that house, and it's going to be sent potentially to that uh, company or whoever is looking for it. A lot of times they did those when they were doing foreclosures, banks didn't pay for a full appraisal. They just wanted to get a broker's price opinion. Now, something you're going to see on the state exam, something you're going to see on the state exam where it says sales associates, okay? I take myself off there real quick. A little quick tip when we see that in there. Sales associates can, remember, can complete a BBP, uh, broker's price opinion, BPO. They can. So if you see that on the state exam, we are allowed to do that. But normally what happens is it gets signed and it gets the approval of the broker, okay? Signed and gets approval of the broker. Now, remember, we don't call these appraisals. We don't call these CMAs. These are broker price opinions, okay? 
Very good, very good. The next one, okay, let's go to the next question. Question number two, okay, question number two. All right, what is FREC not authorized to do? What is FREC not authorized to do? What can't they do, okay? We know in our business, we see that word FREC, and we're like, oh no, what can they do? What can't they do? The first one's A, determine if violations of Chapter 475 exist. Now, I'm going to give you a little hint. We know that they can do that, right? We know that they can do that. Can they adopt new rules? Yes. When it involves real estate licensing, FREC is involved in adopting new rules and regulations within their, uh, in that business, in the real estate business. Can they revoke and suspend a licensee's license, a broker's license? Absolutely. If you really mess up, they can absolutely do that. Now, one thing they cannot do, and be aware of this, they cannot, they cannot send a licensee to prison. Okay. They cannot send a licensee to prison. Now I am told and familiar with it, that that question might come up on the state exam, right? There might be a question that says, can they put somebody in prison and maybe give them a fine? If you see that word prison and you see it with FREC penalties, they cannot do that. Okay. They're not authorized. The only person who can do that is a state attorney's. It's a criminal case. They will have to do that within that district. Okay. So it's going to be the sentence, a licensee to prison. They cannot do that. Okay. FREC is directly responsible for addressing complaints against licensed brokers, salespeople, real estate firms, and real estate educators. FREC reviews complaints filed gives the accused party a chance to defend themselves and determines if disciplinary action is warranted. Now, remember, again, I'll take myself off camera a little bit. A quick tip, FREC, FREC, FREC can suspend your license up to 10 years, 10 years. So if you see that on the state exam, they can suspend your license up to 10 years. They can also find a licensee. They can also find a licensee for up to $5,000 for each violation, okay? For each violation. That's very important you remember that. $10,000, uh, I'm sorry, 10 years suspension, $5,000 max for each violation, okay? So remember those on the state exam. FREC is there to make sure that we are following the rules of real estate in the state of Florida. They cannot put you in prison for your violation. Now, if you commit criminal activity, it's going to be the state attorney's office. It's going to be the state that gives uh, the sentence down, the judge. It'll be in a court proceeding that will send somebody to prison, a place we not, none of us want to go, right? Okay. All right. The next question, let's go ahead and look at question number three. And I think I'm going to give you guys a bonus question. So the question number three, a transaction broker does not have which duty? Now, we all know that there's certain duties in relationships based on what we have. Now, we have non-representation, we have transaction, and we have single agency relationships. Now, some things that we do not have a duty to or does not have a duty to in this one. Let's look at them. A, disclose all known facts that materially affect the value, okay? On that one, we all know that no matter what relationship we are in, we have to disclose all known facts that materially affect the value of a property, right? Present all offers, present all offers, okay? We as a transaction broker must present all offers. The C is gonna be limited confidentiality, limited confidentiality. Now, limited confidentiality is what? That's kind of arm's length. We don't really tell uh, everything to everybody because in a transaction broker relationship, we might be bringing a buyer and we might be working with, not for, working with the seller. We might be working with the buyer and we might be working with the seller. Now, the answer on this one is going to be obedience. Obedience. The only time obedience and loyalty come into effect is a single agent relationship, single agent relationship. So remember, if you see this on the state exam, okay, if you see this on the state exam, if you see that word obedience or loyalty, that is going to go directly, directly to single agency. Also, full confidentiality, if you see that, full confidentiality, right? 
that is going to be also going directly towards single agent. We'll go ahead and go a little explanation there. Now, these are the things that we will have to do if we are uh, if we are dealing with all transactions, right? If we're dealing with with, with all transactions, actually the first the first two when we're dealing with all transactions, but in a transactional brokerage relationship, we're going to be doing this. We're going to deal honestly and fairly. We always, always, always have to account for all funds. In a transaction relationship, we're going to use skill, care, and diligence in the transaction. Skill, care, and diligence in the transaction. And we must disclose all known facts that materially affect the value of the residential property and not readily observable to the buyer. For example, if you know for a fact there's a huge crack in the foundation of a house, okay? There's a huge crack. We got this big crack in the foundation of a house. It's down the middle. The seller comes to you and says, let's put a carpet over it. We can hide this crack. Er, big no, we cannot do that. That has to be disclosed, right? In every type of relationship, if it's non-representation, if it's transactional brokerage relationship, if it's single agent, we have to disclose all those facts, okay? So make sure you're very aware of the of that, and, and I'm sure you are. Anything that we know that could affect the value of the home, we must disclose it, okay? Now, in a situation where we are dealing in single agency, we must deal honestly and fairly. We must have full loyalty to that person. Again, I always like to think of single agency as kind of like you're married to the person, right? You're kind of married to them. Confidentiality, obedience, full disclosure, accounting for all funds, okay? That's very important, right? Okay, so we need to make sure we are use skill, care, and diligence as well. All right, next question. Question number four. Question number four. Which brokerage relationship is the default? And I'm going to take my take myself off here so you can see me, see this. <clears throat> Which brokerage relationship is the default or pursue, presumed in Florida? Which brokerage relationship is the default or presumed in Florida? Again, you will see this or a form of it on the state exam. Is it going to be a single agency? Is it going to be transactional broker? Is it going to be general brokerage? Is it going to be non-rep? Okay. The one in Florida that's a default, the one in Florida that's a default is going to be the transactional broker relationship. Matter of fact, we do not even have to have anybody fill out any paperwork for that, right? We do not even have to uh, have your buyers or sellers fill out any paperwork. We are the transactional broker uh, relationship. We automatically go into that. The only time we change is if we fill out proper paperwork to transition into that or transition back. Okay. So if we go into a single agency brokerage relationship or if we're in a non representation uh, relationship, we have to have paperwork signed. Those are going to be called disclosures. Okay. Make sure you understand that for the state exam, okay? Very important. Now, the presumption of transactional brokership, it shall be presumed that all licensees are operating as a transaction broker unless a single agent or no brokerage relationship is established in writing, okay? In writing. Remember, it has to be a disclosure with the customer. Any additional duties that are mutually agreed upon with the party, okay? So again, we truly... Um, do, have to do that. Uh, we got a few people that have some comments. Let's go ahead real quick. Um, let's see. We got we got uh, Carla. Great to have you on there, Carla. So transaction is the only one that doesn't have to be in writing. Correct. That's a good good thing. That is presumed. It's like the default. Good question, Carla. That is the default. So the transaction. 95% of all transactions in the state of Florida are going to be under the transaction brokerage relationship. That means we can kind of work with a couple different people at the same time, right? We can work with the buyers and sellers. And that's really good for us because when we when we work when we work with the buyers and the sellers, we get what? We get more of that commission. So that's really good with us. And again, we have to work at arm's length with them. We're not in a in a truly a fiduciary uh, capacity with them. So again, very good question. Very good question. All right. Now, 
if we go, if we are operating, if you see something on the state exam, it says if you are in a single agency or non-representation uh, relationship with your uh, customers, right? Customers or clients, whatever you might call them. Uh, if you're in a single agency, they are actually called clients. If you are working with them and it has to be changed for any reason, then we all have a, a paper. We all have a paper that we sign and agree that we're going to transition to transactional broker relationship but initially on the very start you do not need paperwork and it does not have to be in writing for that okay all right good question good question now let's go to the next one question number five question number five all right in the real estate business what is the penalty for a first time minor violation you're welcome carla in the real estate business, what is a penalty for a first-time minor violation? Is it a third-degree felony? It's not going to be a third-degree felony. That's going to be a criminal situation. Is it a citation? Okay. Initially, you might think, hmm, citation, not too bad. But no, it's not a citation. Is it a notice? Is it a notice of noncompliance? Mm, let's come back to that one. Yes, it's going to be a notice of non-compliance, okay? Notice of non-compliance. It's not gonna be a fine for 100. If you get a small minor violation, for instance, let me give you an example. If you have a broker that has maybe improper signage on the front of their business, okay? They might have a sign on the front of their business. It's, it's not properly uh, put up there. Maybe they do not have, it doesn't say licensed real estate broker. Remember, we have to have that on there. Maybe it has something totally different. Maybe it just says broker on there. They go ahead and they give you a notice of non-compliance, which you have 15 days to correct. And if you correct it, get it fixed, there's going to be no penalty if it's a first time thing. So when you see that on the state exam, remember, when you see that notice of non-compliance, think of it like if you're driving your car down the road and you get stopped for speeding and the police officer comes up to your car and you tell him what you did and, hey, I'm sorry, sir, whatever the case may be. He might just give you a warning, right? And then you go off and you do not pay. If he gives you a citation, it's going to cost you money, okay? So make sure you understand the difference of those, okay? Notice of non-compliance, okay? It has to be fixed and taken care of in a quick way. Now, the notice of non-compliance shall identify the statute, what rule did you break, and shall provide information on how to comply with the statute and rule, okay? The DBPR shall allow 15 days for compliance. You have 15 days to get that stuff squared away. And if you get it squared away and make sure you let the state know it, okay, you let FREC know, then they will go ahead, the DBPR know, wherever the rule of violation is, let them know and they will go ahead and not hold that totally against you. The one thing you need to know, though, for the state exam is it's a notice of noncompliance and you have 15 days and it has to be a first time offense okay so if you see something that says second or third time offense it's probably going to go into a citation mode where you're going to have to spend some money on a fine okay everybody good on that okay excellent all right let's go ahead and i'm going to actually do something i'm going to give you a bonus question right i'm going to give you a bonus question because you guys are uh, really having a fun time today so i have a bonus question here so let's go ahead and look at this bonus question and let's take a look at it Question number six. Now, a lot of people get confused on this, and I'm going to try to make it real easy for you, okay? I'm going to try to give you a couple little things that when you see it on the state exam, you'll know, because I can tell you this question, I remember this one from my exam. This is probably going to be on there, okay, or a form of it, okay? Which of the following describes a sales associate that is encouraging a seller, okay? Encouraging a seller to list a property based on a rumor a protected, okay, protected class is moving into the neighborhood, okay? There is a rumor that there's going to be a certain protected class that's coming into the neighborhood. This real estate associate goes out to these houses and starts going and saying, listen, you better sell your house because this group is coming in, okay? This group protected class is coming in. This is a big, big no-no, something we cannot do, right? Is it going to be blockbusting? Is it going to be steering? Is it going to be redlining? 
Is it going to be farming? Which one is it going to be? Okay, which one is it going to be? Now, in this case, we are going to be calling this block busting. Okay, and I'm going to give you a little bit of a way to remember this. Does anybody remember this guy? Does everybody remember this guy? If you can comment, please put it in there. What's this guy's name? This is Mario Brothers, right? Mario Brothers. And I like to remember this through maybe looking at it through Mario Brothers scenario, right? I, I kind of like to laugh at this one because Mario Brothers was, was yeah, there you go. We got Mario, right? Mario, let's see if I can jump in here a little bit. Mario, okay, Mario was, yeah, there we go, Mario. Mario went around and he used his hammer and he smashed up the block. So that's why I like to call it the Mario brother question, right? You go around, you block, you breaking up the block, you breaking, you're breaking up the block, right? Carla's got it. Um, you're breaking up the block and you're doing it in an inappropriate way. You're doing it in an inappropriate way. You cannot go in and basically put fear in people and say, listen, this group of protected class is coming in here. You need to sell your house. Let me list it. That is called block busting. We're going to break them down here in a little bit. Block busting was a business practice in which real estate agents and building developers convinced white residents in a particular area, in this case, to sell their property at below market prices. This is where this came from. This was achieved by uh, fear mongering with the homeowners, telling them that racial minorities would soon come in the area and this place would not be worth as much money. This is going to be called block busting. Now, what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to go over these other ones for you. Okay. I'm going to go over these other ones. We've already talked about block busting. Steering. What is steering? Okay. Basically, steering is if you take a customer or client and they come to you and say, listen, we want to see a three bedroom, two bath house, and we want to go to a neighborhood that only speaks Spanish. Okay. We want to go to a neighborhood that's only Latino. We want to go to a neighborhood that's only Asian. We want to go to a neighborhood that's only white, okay? This is a big, big no-no, okay? We cannot partake in that. The only thing we can do as real estate professionals is we take them and we show them houses that are three bedrooms, two bath with a pool, whatever their criteria is. We cannot steer them to a neighborhood that maybe is all Latino, all black, all white, all Asian, and we cannot steer them away. So if somebody comes to you and says, listen, I would like to not live in a neighborhood where, you know, there's a certain protected class there and you're steering them away, that is a big no-no. In our profession, what we need to do is we need to politely say, we are professionals. We don't operate that way in real estate. Tell me the criteria of your home. And then that's the type of home I'll look for. Okay. Again, we are fair with everybody in real estate. It's very important. Our integrity is a, a big thing. And believe it or not, you will have people that will sometimes try to try to do that. Okay. So again, keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Oh, and I I, I got this banner going on here and I kind of should have shut that off. I apologize. Um, but again, remember, now let's talk a little bit about redlining. Redlining. If you see this on the state exam, redlining basically is treating people differently whether they're going to try to, and it's usually a third party deal, like somebody like a mortgage company, maybe an insurance company, uh, could be even a, a, a ser another service company that treats people different based on their protective class. Maybe uh, if they're white, Hispanic, if they have different prices, that is going to be called redlining. That is going to be called redlining. Those are unacceptable. Uh, we won't go into farming right now because farming is basically a technique used by real estate professionals to go out and get customers and clients in a certain area. Okay. So we learned on this one, block busting, Mario brothers, steering is can't take people to a neighborhood that speaks or has a certain ethnic origin and you can't take them away. And redlining is usually, if you see that on the state exam is going to be a third party situation where people um, charge or they treat people differently based on the race. Maybe their services are different they have higher prices, interest rates may be higher um, those are going to, that's going to be very important to make sure um, that we're not doing that. Okay. So we got a lot done. Believe me, you're going to have these five scenarios, six questions. They're going to be something on your state exam. that's going to be very close to these. 
Again, we don't know exactly what's on the state exam. We just know that when people come back and say, oh, I had a problem with this question, um, I need help on this question. What I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to do these in the group. We love everybody in the group. Uh, everybody's doing great. One thing I can tell you is we're getting a lot of people that are passing the state exam and letting us know they're passing. Whether it's on the first try, uh, our goal is to get you to pass that thing on the first try, right? That's what we really, really want. So you can move on to your career. If you don't pass it the first time, don't worry about it. Just go ahead and reschedule and practice and study more. A lot of people ask me, what do I study? Just keep looking at the questions. On my on the group, on the group, we have um, questions there, quizzes. The more you see, the more you're going to start thinking of questions and how to answer them. What's going to happen on the state exam? There's going to be some words that are going to trigger things. You're going to see, um, remember we talked about single agent. That's an obedience. That's loyalty. You're going to see those on the state exam. You're like, I remember Tim saying that. Okay, that's real important. Okay. One thing I want to tell you is we do, we do have this Saturday, okay, this Saturday, make sure to sign up and we have it again on October 4th, but we really need you to sign up for this one. The good thing about it is if you sign up, you can attend subsequent classes. You just have to let me know with an email so I can get you on the roster. That's all you got to do. That's really good. It's going to be this Saturday. That's going to be our cram class. Now, if you're interested in going, we'd love to see you there. A lot of people ask me if it's recorded. We do not have an online course yet. So what I do is we jam. We go from 9, and I had to extend it. I had to extend it to 5 p.m., all right? I went longer because at 3 o'clock, we're sitting there going, we still got more material. But almost everybody that goes to the class say, we have a lot of fun. We go over quizzes. We do quizzes like this. Uh, we laugh. We comment. We do a lot of fun things. It's on Zoom. So go ahead and sign up. And if you sign up today, and I try to do the sale quite often, to be quite honest with you, but if you sign up today, you're going to get 40% off. So it's only $59.60, right? And you get three huge, huge study guides. One's 430 uh, slides, pages. Uh, the other one's like 39. And that's, and you've got a vocabulary, we've got summary stuff. The information you are going to get in that thing is amazing. It's worth every penny of it. Um, and the good thing about it is you get to go, um, say if you take your test October 27th, you can take it all the way up. I try to have them every couple weeks. I've asked some people, you know, hey, do weeknights work? We'll probably do some of those. I really enjoy teaching them. For those of you who don't know me a little bit, I am a real estate broker. I just actually moved my brokerage to, now I'm a broker associate. Um, I had 50 agents, um, Tampa, Naples, all that stuff. So I've been doing real estate for 20, about 20 years. So I kind of know the stuff and I enjoy teaching it. Actually, I enjoy teaching it better than actually going out showing houses, stuff like that. Because because really when people pass the test, it's a huge, huge, uh, huge accomplishment. And it really makes me feel good. So again, we want you guys to sign up. Please look at the links below. If you go ahead and crank it out right now, get signed up. If you are not taking the test or you don't know when you're going to take the test, do not worry, right? Go ahead and get signed up. We've got a few slots left. I like to try to keep it around 50 people. Um, sign up now, and then we'll see you on Saturday, okay? We'll see you on Saturday. It's going to be a good time, and uh, we really, really enjoy um, having everybody in there. And, and again, we do, we do make it fun, so that's going to be a good time. One other thing we do have is we have these books, right? If you're ready to go and you want to start studying now, and again, I don't want to be here selling a bunch of stuff to you, but we have these books. Things will help you out immensely, okay? Go ahead, click on the link below, grab these books, okay? They come in a PDF. These guides, I'm told from everybody that's, that gets them, says, listen, I went over the guide before I took the exam. And bam, I, it covered everything. It gets rid of a lot of the extra stuff, okay? All right, you guys have been wonderful. We've been here one half hour, or we've been here a whole half an hour. You guys have been great. This is a great group. Remember, when you pass a state exam, please, please, please put it in the, in the uh, group post. If you don't quite get it, don't worry. Put it in there as well. We're going to give you the support you need to get through it, okay? It's, it's a great group. It's a fun group. We're looking forward to see you on Saturday. Remember, sign up now. Try to get signed up. Um, we've got a few spots left. Get in there. We'd love to see you on Saturday. All right, everybody, have a good one. Thank you for uh, joining. And I'm going to be doing these quite often. All right? Thank you.